One of the central narratives around the modern UAP phenomenon that is missing is what's the real purpose behind these visitors or overseers, if in fact that's what they are. Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the sixth man to walk on the moon and someone who professed to have very strong ESP abilities, spoke openly for decades, right up until his death in 2016, about the existence of other intelligent entities beyond modern Homo sapiens. Even during his famed trip to the moon, he spoke openly about being observed and seeing other spacecraft that did not come from NASA, as far as he knew. It is also worth reminding that Mitchell then came back to Earth and went on to work on major government programs with the CIA involving ESP. So, with that in mind, during the WikiLeaks email scandals leading up to the 2016 presidential election, some of the emails released publicly allegedly contain messages that Edgar Mitchell had sent to John Podesta at the White House as the new rookie Obama administration was firing up in 2009, and Mitchell was asking for a meeting to deal with disclosure and, quote, ETI, or extraterrestrial intelligence, and it included this eye-raising passage, quote, the difference between celestials in our own solar system and their restraint by those from the non-violent contiguous universe. Essentially, what that seems to be saying is that there is a sentient intelligence that lives alongside us, sharing a common border with our world, likely along the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, when I spoke to one of the world's most powerful psychics, Uri Geller, he expressed similar feelings that Mitchell had mentioned about the presence of a higher intelligence that was already present around us. Also contained within these published emails is a claim that someone wants to come speak to Podesta about the Catholic Church's knowledge of ETIs. Quote, My Catholic colleague Terry Mansfield will be there too to bring us up to date on the Vatican's awareness of ETI. Her qualifications to speak on behalf of the Vatican is unclear, and we don't know whether that part of the request was honored. But it's worth noting that the emails came from Terry Mansfield's email address, but they were signed by Mitchell, allegedly. A former assistant of Mitchell later wrote a blog post authenticating those emails, but that has since been taken down. Podesta thought enough of the authenticity of the emails to set up a meeting at the White House, but ultimately the meeting never seemed to have taken place. Contained within the email dump, were very interesting revelations uncovered by WikiLeaks that seems to show how Podesta, the former Obama insider and Hillary Clinton 2016 presidential campaign chief, later openly discussed creating Catholic organizations to help promote and build traditional conservative values wrapped around the Vatican's narrative for God and existence to serve a broader political agenda. Curious that Podesta has been one of the more vocal proponents of disclosure, even helping Tom DeLonge of Blink-182 into the Stars Academy in Sciences bring the famous UAP videos to the New York Times back in 2017. But he may have been also carefully aligning his disclosure work in lockstep with the Vatican, which goes back to the race to control the UAP narrative, and thusly, people. Did the Vatican enjoy the benefits of someone like Podesta watching out for them and its narrative when it came to the slow disclosure of UAPs? Well, that's just not clear. Could the same be said for other major religious institutions? Researching UAPs, interdimensional portals, orbs, and other strange events, does this uncover a global religious conspiracy? Well, no, but there are some curious points of fact here worth investigating. Pulling things back to Mitchell's initial emails to Podesta are statements about the long-rumored mythical free energy that is being deliberately withheld from the public. The email chain gets really interesting when Mitchell says, quote, Our non-violent ETI from the contiguous universe are helping us bring zero-point energy to Earth. But Mitchell writes how the ETI won't help humanity if we weaponize space and don't stop the endless cycles of war and conflict, which seems like a tall order considering humanity does conflict better than anything else except maybe pollution, but that's another video. But the core message from Mitchell is the importance of not weaponizing space and finding a way to unwind humanity's violent, cyclical nature. The recent creation of the latest branch of the military, Space Force, is a clear indication that Mitchell's cautions seemingly went unheeded. But if his claims were true, why was the prospect of peace to help elevate all of humanity rejected? That seemed like a pretty good offer. Well, we might end up just destroying ourselves with some of these gifts that we could have bestowed upon us, things that are meant to help us, particularly the mythical quantum free energy or zero-point energy, essentially the means to exploit the infinite natural forces of the universe for free energy. But are we as a species responsible enough to have such a powerful gift and not abuse it and blow ourselves up on the planet? 
The statements about free energy from Mitchell are interesting, especially when layered with comments from other people. Dr. Stephen Greer and his small industry of seminars often speaks about the idea of the knowledge of free energy being withheld from people, and we can't grow to the next level of society without it, a curious intersection of statements from both Mitchell and Greer. While Greer's proclamations lacks the pedigreed credibility of someone like Dr. Mitchell, it is not inconceivable that Dr. Greer is enough in the know to be able to package and sell what he can based around that limited, albeit critical, knowledge. But where does the source of this free energy narrative come from? Well, that is unclear. Mitchell seemingly never disclosed where he obtained that information. But UAPs have been buzzing around for much longer than we appreciate, but not really interacting in a way that modern society would interpret as overtly. Why? Well, maybe as a population, we're just overthinking it. You know, Childhood's End by acclaimed sci-fi author Arthur C. Clarke, the guy who wrote 2001, is the story of a passive alien invasion of a species that is visually horrifying to humans, but benevolent in nature. One of the ideas is that exposure to aliens over a long period of time allows humanity to grow accustomed to something that would otherwise horrify and scare them. But also central is the idea that the individualized mentality of humans must be surrendered for a grand collective identity, acquiescing to the authority of a more more powerful enlightened collective, but blunting the shock and horror through slow exposure might have parallels to modern UAPs. A slow and progressive desensitization to the idea of welcoming neighbors we didn't know existed. Assuming these are the same things that people have been recording throughout history seemingly for thousands of years. It's worth saying now that most people who seem to be deep within the secret bubble of knowledge about UAPs consistently mentions the fact that these things likely aren't here to attack, invade, or do mass harm. Quite the opposite, in fact, allegedly. But what this all means, again, is that we need to have a public, open, global fact-finding mission. Because until that happens, the only agendas being served up are the ones that ends up serving up our ignorance for someone or something or someone else's benefit. And I get the sense they hope we don't have the endless energy to keep pursuing the truth. I guess we'll see. I'm Sean. Thanks for listening. If you like the content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. There's great new material coming all the time. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Another great video is coming up next.